So on this first Sunday of a new year, we do things just a little bit different. I apologize that my voice uh, might not be coming through as loud and clear as I would hope it to, but we pray that the Spirit always comes through loud and clear. Our call to worship comes from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. In a lot of categorizations in wisdom book, we begin with chapter 3 with some very familiar words. Matter of fact, these words are, are so familiar that they actually hold <clears throat> a world record. Actually, four are recorded as the oldest words recorded. Solomon gets credit as the songwriter for the bird's song, turn, 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 taken from this passage. We'll read verses 1 through 13 as our call to worship. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. This is the gift from God. Holy God, we, we thank you for this indescribable gift that you have placed eternity in our hearts. And by allowing us to know Jesus Christ, allowing us to live in that eternity, we thank you that you made a plan for us and prepared a place. We ask that even now, in this time, in this season, in this place, that your spirit would meet with us and that our spirits would be united together in worship. That we would humbly bow before you. Enter your presence. And allow your presence to enter us. This is our prayer as we meet to worship. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the early 40s, Les Brown and his band of renown. Some of you will recall that, that name, Les, band. Les Brown and his band of renown performed a song that he had written with, <clears throat> with Ben Homer and Bud Green. And they wanted to record it, but at that point in time, there was a musician's strike. And they couldn't get the music they were playing recorded. When the strike ended, the band, with Doris Day as their vocalist, recorded Sentimental Journey on November 20th, 
1944. They had a hit record. It was Doris Day's first number one hit that actually hit the charts in March of 1945. Spent 23 weeks on the charts, peaking at number one. Perhaps one of the things that really drove that chart performance of that song was its release was right at the end of the Second World War. And for many, it became a, a homecoming theme. Certainly for those who were deployed overseas, looking to get home. And in that mental, sentimental journey, in a spiritual sense, for those who were at home waiting for loved ones to return, this song spoke to them. And perhaps even more profoundly, for those whose loved ones would never be back. The idea of boarding a train and taking a sentimental journey to revisit those fond memories, to have nothing else in one's mind to connect with a loved one was a trip well worth taking. I'm guessing that some of you, even now, can at least hear the tune and get some of those words. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Gonna set my heart at ease. Gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories. A beautiful song reminding us in such a gentle way of the benefit of looking back, of connecting to those things that mean so much to us. I recently reread a, a piece that uh, my best friend from high school, Tom, had written. It was about being sentimental and a nostalgia for the old places and old things. And in the piece that he wrote, he talked about his kids being in the back of the car while he would drive by his old school, the house where he grew up. Places that meant something to him. And he realized that driving by, you could look in that little rear view mirror and see what's behind you. But you still have a vision through the windshield of what's yet ahead. It's good to be able to take a sentimental journey, to go back and renew old memories. But we keep in mind that we still drive forward, that we move ahead. Our reading from Ecclesiastes reminded us that there are many seasons and many times, and sometimes, <clears throat> those seasons are almost opposites of each other, not unlike spring and fall, summer and winter, time to build, time to mend, time to heal. Time for war. Time to scatter stones. There's a season for everything. And it seems that particularly at the turning of a new calendar year, we can spend a lot of time in sentimental journey, 
looking back at where we've been. But we also spend time looking forward to where we are going. We're reminded of what has come before and reminded that perhaps we are currently in a different season. Yet we move forward. And our journey that's behind us lays the groundwork for what's to come. And we know that the seasons will turn again and quite likely turn again and again and again. That perhaps for you, this past year was a year that you're looking forward to getting away from. That you're looking forward to what will come in 2022. And for new seasons, positive seasons, encouraging seasons. But even so, perhaps in looking in the rearview mirror, when, when you commit to a sentimental journey, you can find some good, even in that worst of years. And as we move forward, we have no promise of what the next year will bring. We might have plans and dreams and visions, but seasons may turn. And so we're prepared that maybe the next season won't be the best, but we will still find joy in it. Because the past has taught us that. That in every season, we can make room for the eternity that God has placed in our hearts. And we can find the things that are eternal. We can find things like love and grace and truth. Even in the midst of things that seem to go counter to those things. And so our sentimental journey into the past prepares us for our journey into the future. Strengthens us and equips us for that time. There was a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. Our gospel reading for today really places an emphasis <clears throat> on time. It starts with those familiar words from John 1, verse 1. In the beginning, in the beginning, the same words that open the Old Testament, the same words that open the revelation of God to us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That's a little bit of a sentimental journey, isn't it? Looking back. Seeing where all things come from. Emanating <clears throat> from the word. Pouring forth from the word of God. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. <clears throat> In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. In your sentimental journey, you might look back and see that indeed there have been times of darkness. But when you look for the light, when you look for that truth and that love, that grace, that hope, darkness cannot overcome that light. And we bear that as a testimony moving forward, continue our journey. As we enter 2022, darkness cannot overcome light. The text continues in verse 6. There was a man from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. This is the right that he has given us. The word that was the word at the beginning came to us to give us the right to become children of God, born of God. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I have no idea what this next year holds. But I know this. God has made his light shine before us. The God who placed eternity in our hearts has called from eternity to us and welcomed us to himself. And no matter what is behind or what is to come, there is no darkness that can overcome that light. And this is the testimony, isn't it? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There's an amen there. Now John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we've all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is closest, in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. We know God through Jesus Christ. Perhaps your sentimental journey will go back and visit some of those places where you have God, known God most. And it would not surprise me that some of those places where you've known him the most, when you've experienced the light the most, 
was in some of the darkest times. The time when you could not do it on your own. When you were left on your knees with your spirit groaning. That word that was the word from the beginning came to you. And you knew peace. We look in the rearview mirror and we're reminded of that. We're encouraged as we see the road disappear around the bend ahead of us. We don't know what's coming. But we do know who has been before, who is now, and always will be with us. Let's take a sentimental journey. Let's set our hearts at ease. Let's take a sentimental journey and renew old memories. Let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you. As we enter this new year together, we give you praise and glory and honor. We recognize in reflecting that we've had challenges. We've had struggles. Hardship, and you've never left us. We've been worn out, we've been worn down. You've always been there. We've been weak, and you've been strong. We have felt powerless but known your power. And so we begin our new year together, praying before you, lifting up burden and loss, struggle, trauma, anxiety, fear, but also praying to you in confidence because we've known grace in the midst of it, peace in the storm. We've known security in turmoil, confidence in confusion. We've known those things because of you. Because you've chosen to make yourself known. And so we claim the promises of life. Life with a capital L. Life in abundance. Life overflowing. Oh, perhaps not as the world might identify the good life. Maybe not the way that social media portrays success or happiness. But with the light that shines in the darkness. With the things that matter in eternity. We've known hard seasons and good seasons. We've known trying seasons and seasons of Sabbath rest in you. We don't know what season's coming tomorrow. But we know you're with us. And we're confident.
excited. We're ready. Uh, we'll still look back in the rearview mirror. But there's a wide open road before us. And now, Father, as we take communion together, we do this in remembrance. Not to be stuck in the past. But to learn from that past as we move into our future. We're reminded of your crucifixion, your death for our sin. Not so we dwell in that sin, but we recognize our freedom from it. We remember your body broken, your blood shed, not to dwell on death and torture, but to be reminded of new life, of sacrifice and love that allowed us to be born of God, brothers and sisters with Jesus Christ. We do this in remembrance so that we know that you continue to be with us today and tomorrow. On this first Sunday of the new year, hear, O Lord, our prayer together in the name of Jesus. Amen. From in front of this nativity, in front of the shiny manger scene, we take the bread about the same size as that little manger. And we're reminded that the one who came and was placed there among the cattle, the one who had that weak, dependent flesh, was the word of creation that made all things. Submitting himself to the care of that creation. And he grew, and he walked among us. He saw our brokenness, he saw our sin. His own closest friends ran and hid. One of his closest was the one that betrayed him. He chose to be broken for us. When we remember the manger, we also remember the cross. And we do this in remembrance. Take the cup. Remembering that there's always been a price for sin. When we go back to that book of Genesis, in the beginning, and we remember. 
remember Adam and Eve and their rebellion? How, when they first sinned, they sought to cover themselves? And when we read the text closely, we see that their attempts failed. And God provided them skins to wear and cover their nakedness. Those skins came at a price, a blood price. There's always been a price for sin. And in this cup we remember that Jesus who created us in the image of himself and his father. That word that was there at the beginning when eternity was placed in our hearts paid the price for us. When we take the cup, we do this in remembrance. Thank you for worshiping with us today. A little bit different. That's all right. Thank you for taking the sentimental journey. For taking a journey to a table of remembrance. And thanks for beginning this new year together. Can't wait to see what God has in store for us next. Receive now the benediction. Go. Continue your journey. Go into your tomorrow. Go into your new year. In the loving knowledge of Jesus Christ. who came, that you may be saved. Go. In his wisdom and in his grace, go. Be a blessing and be blessed. Amen.